My name is Andrea Fatona and I'm the curator of the Fibroid Optics Group Exhibition. The four artists in the exhibition, um, Frank Dorsey, who's a textile artist from Nova Scotia, Jerome Havre, who's from Montreal, originally from Paris, uh, Ed Pian, who lives in Toronto, and uh, Michel Prevost, who lives in the Gatineau. Each artist actually works with either synthetic fiber or natural fibers. And again, I uh, really wanted to use fiber in the exhibition because we're all, um, we all have some relationship to fiber, whether or not it's textiles or rope. So there's an everyday understanding of the material and we all bring our histories or our relationship to the material to our understanding of the works in the exhibition. My name is Frances Dorsey and I live in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I teach at um, NASCAD, the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design. And the two pieces that I have in the show are Rice Patties and Nostalgia Series. Rice Patties is a piece that's about 30 feet long by 11 feet high, and it's made out of about 28 separate panels of cloth that has been dyed, printed, discharged, stitched on, and worked. The cloth was mostly scraps from my studio, and what I wanted to do was construct a, a, a sensory experience of um, standing and looking at the landscape and having it be bigger than you were, so that everywhere you looked you would see, in this case, rice paddies. Embedded in the rice paddies are also images of soldiers, scraps of text from my father's World War II journals, uh, silver bamboo stakes, so I was thinking about rice paddies as a beautiful sensory place, but also as a very dangerous place with a dark history, certainly for North Americans. The second piece is Nostalgia Series, and that's a series of stories that I wrote as I was trying to think about what it was like to live in Saigon as a child. I wrote the stories to try to clear my mind while I was making rice patties and the weavings that illustrate the stories and a number of other pieces also relating to that period. Um, there's also a desk and typewriter. The desk is the kind of desk that one might find in a colonial um, Southeast Asian place in the 50s. And the typewriter was one like the one that my father used that feet figured in one of the stories. The stories were originally typed on the typewriter as well. The construction of cloth happens through a slow, repetitive, incremental process, which is sort of the way that we live our lives as well. So for me, the use of cloth is, um, is a device or a metaphor that touches on a lot of different points. I like that it's domestic, that it has not been regarded as a high art material. I like that it's women's materials. Um, I like the fact that it can take so much abuse in terms of putting color on, taking color out, marking, cutting, stitching, folding, burning, wetting, crunching, all of that kind of material. It has its, it pushes back. so working with it, it becomes a conversation between your ideas and the material. So it's it's an exchange. And um, one is not certain what's going to happen, so that's very interesting as well. Je m'appelle Jérôme, Jérôme Havre. Uh, je J'habite à Montréal depuis quelques années. Voilà, je suis originaire de la France. Uh, J'ai été invité ainsi que tout le reste de l'équipe a participé à l'exposition Fibre Optique à la galerie de Richmond. The hybrid uh, series is uh, um, a series with uh, dolls sculpture. Um, more or less, the size is more or less 72 centimeters, and uh, um, the material I use is textile and felt. Um, I use um, the felt uh, like uh, clay. In fact, you, I um, I don't know how do you say, but I 
en français, je, je mets des, euh, les matériaux les uns au-dessus des autres, un peu à la manière effectivement de la terre, euh, la terre glaise. Finalement, mon travail euh, se compose, euh, enfin, se fait en, en deux parties. Une partie qui est beaucoup plus intime, finalement, où je réalise euh, ces, ces sculptures euh, dans mon atelier, et une autre partie finalement qui se fait avec d'autres, dans le cadre finalement d'une installation où je peins les murs. Donc, je réalise une, une murale. I realized a mural uh, with a, with a, a pattern I chose before. Uh, in, this, in the case of this exhibit, that will be a, a square, blue square, with um, an over, I put um, uh, posters uh, with uh, sentences and pictures. Um, Jérôme have works with soft sculptures, and I was, that was the first work I saw when I was bringing the exhibition together. And in his work, what he's done is he's thinking through this idea of hybridity, hybridity as it has to do with identity, hybridity as it has to do with race, hybridity as it has to do with cultures. So the works for me really were quite poignant to my own identity and to my own history and to what I would like to see within Canadian art institutions, which is a range of works that aren't always works by a, a similar, we'll say, yes, I can say it, um, a kind of white conceptual art that at times we don't all have access to. And with Jerome's work, I believe because they're soft sculptures, they're like toys, we immediately have a response to it and a relationship to it. My name is Ed Pien. I'm a Toronto-based artist, and the piece that I'm presenting here is called Corridor. Well, Corridor was made in 2009, and it's a pretty new piece, even though it was from two years ago. It's new in the sense that it was the first time I've actually used rope uh, to kind of figure out what I want to do, uh, trying to manipulate the space, uh, kind of how to make work that would negotiate uh, a sight with a viewer uh, and because I'm really interested in drawing rope to me was a really exciting way to to deal with the space deal with a sense of um, other possibilities that, that's not more than two-dimensional well yes I am known more as a drawing based artist but for me drawing is more than just saying I draw drawing is about pushing the boundaries of what drawing could be uh, so in a way, if people were to ask me what, what, what my definitions of drawing would be, uh, by s stating a definition, I feel I've imposed a limit, its possibilities. So, so my, I, but I still have a definition. Uh, my definition for drawing is that, that drawing is what it doesn't have to be. So in that way, drawing has limitless uh, opportunities and possibilities. And for me, using rope is a way to start in, uh, thinking about how to create a kind of drawing in space, a kind of drawing that negotiates or, or the viewers can negotiate. So in fact, in, in the corridor piece, there's also a play with temporality. Uh, uh, the video projector casts a shadow of the actual line over a video projection of the, the rope piece of, of itself. So there's a, a play with a double time, a, a kind of a real shadow and a video uh, videotape shadow. And um, there, there's a, I would say, <clears throat> a really um, confused moment maybe for the viewer if they were to come upon the piece because they'll see their own shadows and once in a while they'll see my shadow walking through alongside them. So it's, I like the sense of interruption and the, and the sense that an artwork can provoke thought and uh, make people kind of think about their own positions. Well, for me, it's, it's an exciting piece uh, just because I've paired a traditional kind of drawing because it's on paper with what I made in space. I find lines are very powerful um, elements uh, and especially when they're in space. In the drawing, the line has a sense of, a, I would say, infinite space because it just goes on. In, in the construction with the rope, there's a def definite kind of boundary. So, so the play between the two is quite, quite lovely. The other person in the exhibition is uh, Michelle Provost, and I found her work when I moved to Ottawa and I needed a fourth artist and really wanted someone who, again, works really laboriously with, with their material. So 
put out a, a few um, feelers and found out that she was producing the work she does. And the work in this exhibition is called Abstract Resumes. And what it is, is her engagement with, with um, art theory, particularly through art magazines, and the ways in which the economy of art gets circulated through the language that we use to talk about art. And even more importantly, the ways in which art magazines actually come to create a kind of universal language around the world in whatever culture one exists in. Within the milieu of contemporary art, we use the same types of catchphrases around the works. Um, a lot of them become very academic, scholarly types of our descriptions. And for the most part, over time, the these ways of describing artworks become somewhat divorced from the actual work itself. Um, the one thing I'd like viewers to take away from the exhibition is a feeling of um, delight, excitement, openness to engage with it, openness to bring what we know of the world to the work, and an openness to want to experience it. Um, what I really hope for this exhibition is that um, our audiences will experience something after moving through it.